Yeah, I guess it all started, uh, well, I can go back to when I was on Sunday night and stuff, but let's say uh, about a year ago, SRAM contacted us and said, hey, we're working on this new group set. I'd like you to come and see it and see if we can work together on, uh, on, on this a little bit. And so we went to San Luis Obispo, California, and test wrote uh, the product, which will soon be known as the uh, Red AXS uh, ETEF. And um, you know, we liked it and we were talking to them also about what this could mean when you have 12 speeds, what could it mean for one by, what does it mean for two by. And uh, in the end they, liked, they asked us if we wanted to be a, a large part of this product. So they have uh, you know, some of the really large uh, bike companies uh, of this world uh, as a large partner and they have uh, very, very few uh, really small ones and we're one of those small ones. So um, you know, it's a pretty big honor for us and uh, we're glad to do that. And so we're launching uh, three bikes uh, today. With, uh, with Red AXS. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, you know, so when you, you look at the new SRAM uh, groups, and obviously you get the 12 gear, which, which is nice, but, you know, 2x11 or 2x12, it's already a lot of gear, so it's not going to completely blow your mind, but I think also in general with that whole group set, uh, just the shift in performance, uh, the brakes, uh, everything is just you know that next uh, step uh, nicer. And, you know, when, when you think about the brakes, the first you know sort of uh, series uh, of uh, disc brake road groups, you know there were all sort of you know, a mountain bike brake that was slightly adapted to work on the road. And then you come to you know things that you don't really like about that, like noise is much more important than a road than a mountain bike where you have a lot of noise already, anyways. And uh, so the actuation, all these things are a lot different now than they were on the first generation of, uh, of these group sets. And so it just, uh, yeah, it's, it's a much more refined ride. And, uh, and then for us, you know, to say, okay, wh which bikes make sense for us to build around that? There's, there's basically three. It's easy for us because we only have a few models. We don't have really three models. So for each category, we have uh, a bike equipped with, uh, with red AXS. And so on, on the Strata, obviously, there it's a, a big deal of having that 12th car go from 1 by 11 to 1 by 12. That's that's huge. And of course, when we introduced the Strata, we already knew 12th week was coming. And uh, so the very, very early adopters, they, they understand that 1 by 11 is already great. But having that extra gear, 1 by 12, is uh, you know really just icing on the cake. So it just opens up 1 by 12 road bikes for a lot bigger group. Then the 2x12 Strata do it for those people who still want to you know, hang on to that front rear, they can do that. And then we also have a 2x12 Exploro, so the, the gravel bike, which is a little bit odd for some people to think, like because in gravel, obviously the trend is even stronger towards one by. But we think with the 2x12 um, on the Explorer, you get sort of this one bike for everything, right? So it's really the, the, the fast version of the gravel bike. So you, you put some good tires on there, you can keep up with any any road ride uh, on your gravel bike and then if you want to do something crazy you put on different tires and, uh, and go off-road and, uh, and basically are unstoppable. Um, yeah it's yeah I mean in general people don't like new things you know this is how uh, how our DNA works so um, that's that's how we survive in the wild, but of course that doesn't necessarily serve you that well in, in today's uh, world. Um, but yeah, so the first instance for people is like, oh, I don't like that. You come up with ten reasons why it doesn't work, and you know that that's and you have to live like that. I just go crazy by all the new stuff. So that, that that's fine. And then there's some people who who loved it, and what we noticed is that the people who tried it, you know, there was a very high percentage of people that that loved that bike, um, but. And even a high percentage of people never even tried it. So, and it also depends on what kind of rider, right? Obviously, um, I think for the riders who are actually our customers, um, you know, it, it almost always is a very nice riding bike that has the gears they need and rides where they need to ride, and they have the simplicity, the lower weight, all these things. So, and every team in the world and every bike sponsor in the world says that pro racing is about testing their equipment. Well, testing also means a chance that it doesn't work. Otherwise, it's not testing, then it's just marketing. So if you go with a bike that's, you know, 3% stiffer than last year's bike and you go test that with your pro riders, that's not testing, you already know it will work fine, right? So that's just, uh, you know, marketing, putting some sort of spin on it. If you really want to test, you have to accept failure as well. And so obviously, you know, that publicity did, didn't do us much good, but 
but the overall trend remains. As we get more and more cogs in the rear, the reason to have a front derailleur becomes less and less and less. And so with 1x11, it was a small group that was ready to make that change to 1x. With 1x12, it will be a much bigger group and so on and so on. But once we're at 1x14, there'll be very, very few people still asking for a front derailleur, right? So the trend is clear. It's just a matter of when will people switch now or, you know, as of, well, let's say yesterday when it was 1x11 or today now that it's 1x12 or they still wait another generation to 1x13. And I mean, it doesn't really matter to me, right? I mean, I'm, it's not that I'm a front the radar hater. I mean, it's a bit of a clumsy piece of equipment compared to everything else that you have on a bike, but, but it's fine, right? If people want a front the radar, uh, we offer that. Um, you know, it's, it's okay. Most important to me is that people ride bikes. That's, uh, I think, what makes this world a better place. Well, I think if you ask anybody in the industry, they'll probably all tell you the same thing, that in general, uh, product development with professional cyclists is painful. Uh, so it's just a matter of how painful it is and whether that pain is worth uh, you know, the benefits. And so, um, yeah, I've, I've had really positive experiences. When we had the Savella test team, which of course was you know, fully focused on that, and we also hired riders based on that, you know, then it was actually not painful and it was really pleasant and, uh, and the outcome of that has also been good, right? And not just for Cervelo at the time, but also when you look at, uh, you know, some Castelli clothing that still is in the line today, right? Like the Gabba jersey came directly from that, uh, rotor cranks were developed, you know, through that. And so there are a lot of products that came directly out of that, you know, development effort. Um, you know, and then we had other experience, of course, working with Garn Rees. Um, we got a lot out of it, but it also cost us a lot in, in the way of you know, frustration and, and complexity in dealing with that. So that was still a positive. And then, yeah, we've also had situations where, you know, teams were so clueless or disorganized that you just get nothing out of it. And in fact, it's, a, it's just a drag. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's run the gamut, but, uh, but overall, I think it's, uh, and it depends on what you're, what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to test, right? I think the other trend though that's happening now is that more and more people are realizing that while the you know the 1990s and early 2000s were all about riding with the pros ride, now people are much more thinking like, no, I, I don't need to ride with the pros ride, I need to ride what's proper for me. And that might be something very different. So there's much more a split now between you know racing bikes and you know road riding bikes or endurance bikes or whatever, and then you know next step over and say gravel bikes and bikes like that. So uh, where it used to be that you know the consumer is really oh I want to ride with Chris Froome right except with ten spacers more now they're much more like okay what where I ride where you know the roads are not closed when I ride and then, you know I, I don't have a stopwatch all the time and where I ride what's appropriate for that in my fit and in the tires that I need and the clearance and all these kind of things so so in that sense I think pro cycling has become less less important as a as a testing ground. Uh, and probably also as a as a marketing tool, it's also become a bit less important. And that uh, I don't find that people follow pro cycling as closely anymore as they used to. Whether that's because of the scandals or because of this divide between racing and riding, I'm not sure. But just the general trend seems to be that people care less about pro cycling now than say 10 years ago. Uh, I mean, it hooks on a little bit to the, the previous question that, um, you know, now that we have, you know, gone from really race bikes to more endurance or more comfort bikes or just at least the more comfortable geometry and some other details, and those bikes have become predominantly disc brake bikes now. Now the difference between that and say a gravel bike has become much smaller, right? I mean, what's the difference between an endurance bike with disc brakes and a gravel bike? Well, the difference now is and with gravel bike, I mean a performance gravel bike. I don't mean the three months in Mongolia with, you know, with bags and everything like that, but just the normal gravel bike you would ride around on a daily basis. Um, you know, the difference between those two, the gravel and the endurance bikes, are basically tire clearance. So if you're on a gravel bike, you can do everything you can do on an endurance bike, but also more by putting in bigger tires and maybe different wheel sets and all those things. Then you start to see that those are merging, or basically the endurance bike becomes the gravel bike. Right, so I think that's that's really the trend of, of the next couple of years. That most people who are not racing 
will start to trend slowly towards you know um, a bike that is uh, a gravel bike with a great set of road wheels and then when you want to you put in some you know some mud bike wheels or some some gravel wheels and so i think that's that's definitely one big trend and the other trend that will remain is that within that road category the tires will continue to be a little bit wider and that's also why you know the strata is an aero bike but that fits 30 millimeter tires because um, you know, yes, you want to go fast, but if around those bigger tires, you can design the aerodynamics and so you can have fast and comfortable uh, for most, you know, mere mortals. That's a, that's a good thing. And in fact, even for professionals, that's a good thing. And, you know, and when you look at the feedback on the team on that, it's like, you know, from day one, everybody was like, okay, the bigger the biggest tires we can fit, which we always thought would be the other way around. That the pros would say, oh, you know, I still want small tires, but the pros were mean, like, no, no, bigger tires, bigger tires. Whereas even the you know the regular consumer is a little bit more hesitant than that because they think oh maybe it will scratch the frame or things like that. It's getting away from that traditional mindset maybe, uh, especially the pros where it's like yeah that was a, that was a un, yeah unexpected. I was, yeah. yeah you you expect resistance mm, of course. And I mean you see this with the pros right into before you know whatever the SIP was really the first deep carbon wheel set to come into the pro peloton in 2003. And 10 years later, there were still French teams riding aluminum box section rims, right? Uh, so, so sometimes in pro cycling, things go very, very slowly, and then sometimes they go quickly. And what you see now with disc brakes, right? Everybody was saying it's nonsense, nonsense, and next year, you know, it will be pretty much all disc brake. And partially that's because the sponsors will mandate that, but uh, and it's also, you know, no, nobody will die next year of disc brakes, and, and, you know, the world will keep spinning for yeah. some reason or another. So, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Great. Good stuff. Thank you very much.